All right, I'll just start out saying that that last time was fucked, man. I'm so fucked. Stella's doing so like she's not having a good time at all. And everything in my body hurts too. So I completely get, you know, she's having a rough time. It's like, we'll see if she can make it through this <laughs> without needing to get up or something. She can't stay uh, comfortable. I was trying to, uh, you know, pinpoint where it was it was hurting because her leg looks so much better, but I'm sure it's gotta be hurting. And then it's always in this fucking rain and shit. And then I'm, I don't know what the fuck they're, the water stuff they're spraying on us outside, but in, even in the faucet, like uh, yesterday, I, I, I'll sit there and think, okay, I'm only going to wash my hair every few days, like, uh, cause I have these shampoo bars and, um, so, but there's something where it's, it's so freaking grime, even when you first get out. It feels like there's just an oil coating on your hair. I almost rewashed it yesterday after I got out of the shower. I was like, oh my God, do I need to wash it with real shampoo? And then I was like, no, I'm not doing that. The, you know, like that comes in the bottle. Supposedly these bars have, you know, less bullshit, but who knows? I mean, they're just little shampoo bars. They don't last long. And the, the uh, but it, uh, you have to use dry shampoo as soon as you get out. It's like, your hair has got some kind of oil on it or something. And so then, um, uh, and there's, I know there's something in the water out here and it just keeps pouring and pouring and we've got all these floods, this atmospheric river. I'm going to try and go down off the hill today, but you know, it's like, and I did see a scientist, uh, yesterday saying that I was talking about all the changes and stuff. And somebody was like, well, what are we supposed to do? And he said, I advise you to all get to the higher grounds. And, um, you know, I don't know if I'm high enough. I don't, I mean, I'm staying out of these floods, but like, I, I don't think my area is going to be here on these different maps. It always looks like it's going to be gone. And so anyways, the, uh, I'm just go off on that, but there's other stuff I wanted to say. Um, so I know she's struggling uh, and I know she'll start walking funky when, you know, leg hurts and something which sets off her hips and her back. So I was pushing it. Seemed like it was on her upper back is really hurting. I don't know. I'm sure she's got so many pain. She's got such a huge breakout and stuff. And then she's probably got so much uh, toxins in her body. She's just biting it and biting it. But anyways, last night was fucking, oh my God, the past three nights have been hellacious. I am exhausted. Especially, it's just like as soon as you doze off, wake up. And it, 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 to me, like it's it's becoming so absurd. It's becoming so strange. It's just like there's no way this is fucking orchestrated. There's no motherfucking way this could be going on. I can't even tell you. It's just like, oh, oh my god. So, um, anyways, I'm tired. My check hasn't gone in yet. I don't know, you know, what fuck around fuckery I'm, is gonna be. Hopefully it's going to go in and I'm going to run down to the store and get some food. And then, you know, just take the next bit. Uh, I think next week, I don't know, I think I get it paid again before the Christmas week time. So, um, or no, it, it's the same week because it's the 20th. <clears throat> so there's more stuff, you know, but I... Uh, I just, I can't believe it's going to make it to the end of the year. I mean, every, even though things have not happened, you know, and they said, oh, this date, this is going to happen. This date is going to happen. And, you know, we're still sitting here chugging along, getting sicker and sicker. There's so much happening. I just don't see how people cannot be like, okay, it's going way slower than I wanted. But it's fucking shit. Shit is going down, man. And, um, and things are being exposed all the time. Just that fucking house uh, they're still pushing that you know that they blew this guy up it's like did they have a body in there is this all a setup because the guy's alive he's still talking out i mean he's probably in hiding but and now this big thing that happened in virginia which i think it was virginia at the school um uh, i had caught it live for a minute yesterday <clears throat> and the thing oh the guy they were all outside but uh, I have never seen so many police at one place. N never in my life have I seen that many police sirens at one place. It was insane. 
the, the street was full, like four or five across. Just police sirens, they were all over. It was wild. I was like, this is weird. Like, fuck, this is weird. And then, um, but now there's uh, stories being told. Just like how, you know, the one in Vegas or at the concert, how the people who were there, the story didn't match. So there's a lot of inconsistencies again with this one, where the people who were there are seeing something different than the people who are reporting about it. And there's a lot of inconsistencies and a lot of lies, but the thing is, is all these lies are to expose us to how really, uh, how much lies are around us, you know, like those of us who are aware of this and we look at it like, fuck, oh, no, this is bullshit. Like, we don't believe shit. You see anything, it's like, well, this is bullshit. That's bullshit, that's bullshit. You know, we don't get caught up in the bullshit. But then there's people who are just riding on every fucking word of it. And then getting outraged. But see, that's the energy. That's the energy I'm talking about. We need this turning. Those of us who are back here watching, we, we, we it's like, it's like when you think of, man, this is hard. It, it's like, it's like a, an energy, and the, but the energy, oh man, so the energy like starts. So those of us, it's in different stages, and so those of us who like saw this stuff, you know, we went through trying to tell people, and people were like thought we were crazy. We were getting isolated. We were getting made fun of and you know put out here in wonderland of weirdo people and nobody listening and that's a whole development when you get out here in isolation and the people around you reject you it's a whole process and for me it was years it's taken years of going through this process then where all of a sudden you find yourself like Okay, I'm not caught up in it. I'm not caught up in what these people think. What, and I'm just watching. I'm watching this play out. And and then there's still triggers that will pull you in. There's still things, you know. I mean, they're pulling. But there's certain things that aren't anymore. But there's the whole next group. Like this second wave coming in of the outrage. Where they're speaking out. But there's, see, there's way more. And then they got these people on this side to back them up. We're all like, <laughs> we've been saying this shit, man. And so they have they, they have a safer place to come in. And so they're a lot more, it, It's a, the energy becomes more assertive, more aggressive towards the truth. And so that wave comes in and they are outraged, yelling out and stuff. And then because, you know, this is really about the awakening. This is just one way to do it, I guess, that... Um, uh, the um, since it's really about the awakening it is about uh, there's so much with the ego like this is a spiritual thing so it's churning up things inside you development stages things for you to see things for you to understand and so it's like a growth is occurring which which we are a part of the universe so it affects out and so this is oh yeah that's so trippy uh, there's a, a guy sitting there on top of water with the planet behind him with stars around him and he has his light in the inside of him and it's rippling out it's uh, going out and out and see that uh, is what the energy goes out into the universe like that and that is what causes these reverberations that's why there's these sun flares and stuff People get all caught up in thinking because they are the small little ant. Well, the sun and the earth are attacking us. No, we're waking up. We are creating this. This all is written. This is all, it's, it's written in the stars. Oh, I'll say this too real quick. Because, you know, we have all these name dropping channelers. And, you know, they're always, you know, they're cha channeling uh, the Galactic Federation. A lot of them channel... There's tons with Archangel um, Michael and tons with um, Commander, what is that guy's name? Commander Asta, I, I can't think of it right now, but one of the, this commander of the Galactic Federation. And um, so all these people who are always 
you know, telling you what they're saying. And so this girl, now I'm not sure what this, it would be called because she was reading a script. And like, I know Daniel Scranton, like he puts out a printout, like he'll say, he'll say the message, what they're saying to him, but then he'll print it out into a, an email too. So you can read it or he, um, I'll say it on video because each day he will go and he will um, talk to the Arcturian Council and then he'll say what they say. And so he, um, but this girl, so I saw this girl yesterday, I've never seen her before. But so she said that she was uh, talking to, I mean, she's more like a, well, you know, I was talking to Kinetic, one of the Galactic Federation. And, and we had a conversation, so I'm gonna tell you what it was yesterday. But then she's like doing it like a script. So I don't know, like, was she talking to him? She's writing it down. Did she tape it and or audio it? And then she went back and uh, wrote it or something? Or what, like, well, I'm, I'm not sure how she did this. But so she wrote down their conversation. And the guy would even be like, Elizabeth. <laughs> like, this is very strange. Um, I've never had, I've never had my, um, my, the people who I talk to, I've never had them refer to me as like, Kelly, come on, Kelly, never, <laughs> I had that, so, um, it's just trippy, but anyway, so she, um, so the guy's like, uh, she's like, kinetic, what about this, and he's like, Elizabeth, this is what I'm saying, <laughs> so I was listening to this guy, you know, I wanted to see, you know, how much does this go with what I'm, like, is it way off or something or what I'm saying? Which it sounded to me like it was the same as what I'm saying. And so she said that, um, he said too, that, um, what are we, uh, you know, how much longer are we going to go through this and about all the stuff with the, uh, he may have been somebody who said move to higher land too. Maybe that's who would say it. But she was asking him all this kind of stuff. Uh, you know, what's going on? How long is this going to go? When are we going to see it change? And so he said that this is going to go for years. And um, that the, all the bank, all that stuff is going to collapse. Which I know that. I mean, I've been told this stuff. And it goes with what's happening. And we're going into a completely different world. like, And we're shedding this old world. We're shedding this old skin. The skin that doesn't have any purpose anymore. And we're going into new skin, new skin that is, you know, for a new experience. And uh, he said that it's going to go on for years and that uh, after years of this stuff, then there's going to be something's going to happen. It's going to make a big change. And then we're going to start with the putting things back together. And so, see, that's how I see it is that this is going to be. We're, we're going through this stuff with the awakening and stuff because what was another one? Oh, that guy at the debates like fuck i was like hell yeah because uh, we there's gonna be more and more of this stuff where they can't they can't cap it they can't shut it down like these people are gonna get on the main stage and they're going fucking say some shit and so that guy he was just on it then he, you know he's uh he's gotta be white out and then it uh then he turns around outside and gets a reporter to ask him something he goes again and starts telling all this stuff and you know and they're i'm sure you know they're hoping that there's going to be a lot of people who are going to see that that don't know or, or just have heard their you know their daughter-in-law saying this weird stuff and but then they're going to see it right in their face. So even if it's just like a hundred or a thousand or a hundred thousand people who wake up from that, it's, it still jolts them into more like, oh, what? Like, that's what so-and-so has been saying, you know? So it's like coming from all these different directions. But, you know, like I said, a lot of these people who are so angry out there, you know, caught up in this stuff, they are real caught up in ego. And so me knowing that this is really a spiritual thing, these are like giving you opportunities to see yourself, to notice, you know, like if I get mad, I lose my shit. I, I become very divisive. I become very hateful. 
like I said, that one girl, she's like, I'm so weird because she used to have a regular face, you know, she used to be a regular face. Then one day she put on the bold glamour filter and never took it off. And then watching this transformation go, but like right now she's like Sam Kinison with a pretty face. It's like wild. She just gets so, um, so mad. And she laughs through it too. Like she's, she's and she's, but she's very, uh, I don't know. I don't want to say full of herself because people could say I am. Like it's all perspective. It's all what what you see. It's what the you know. It, it, you know. It, I may not feel like I am, but somebody who and it could be somebody super insecure and think like, oh my god, that person's so full of themselves. That's why you can't sit there and get caught up in seeing yourself through someone else's eyes because it, it's all different perspectives. Bending on what they've gone through in their life is going to see how they're going to see you. So it's all dependent on the viewer. So you can't sit there and like try and please every viewer. Oh, got to please that one. Oh, I want you to think I'm cool. Oh, I like you too. I want you to think I'm cool. You know, you just got to be you. And let the cards fall where they may. <laughs> so the, um, but it's wild watching some of these people who think like they're, you know, they're the ones who are, oh my God. It's only been on a few minutes too. A weird thing happened too a little while ago. This was so creepy because I was looking on TikTok, I think, because I was sitting here drinking my tea and looking at TikTok and, um, and it was like, uh, this is so fucking creepy. It was like this big black, black thing came in and took away the light for a second and it was like, it was eerie. And so then I looked up real quick to see like what did the lights go out and what well, they weren't and Stella was looking right at me like oh <laughs> like I saw it too I was like fuck and um when you know somebody you know is here who carries a lot of oh, it's intense dude it's intense fuck. so it's like oh man there's a lot of energies around like I already even know like I mean if you fucking got a man in black in your house it, in, you know, again, they can use people as astral travelers. So, you know, men in black, I use loosely. I'm talking about people from like the secret organization. They use people through astral travel as spies and stuff. And I'd heard about that fucking years ago, watching some astral traveler videos. And I was when I was like, oh, maybe I want to try an astral traveler. I, I did it by my, I mean, I did it without even trying before it came out of my body. And I had talked to my one grandson, you know, the one who, um, it's about to be his birthday. You know, he's 17 and he, um, said 17, right? When I said 17 and he said, um, but, uh, he used to come out of his body all the time when he was little. He said he would find himself out walking around in the thing and then he would go into his room and he'd be laying there and it would happen all the time. So I think some of us would just, and then he talked to his dad his dad said that that happens to him too. I don't just come out all the time. I don't, I walk around my house, but I go into weird dreams. Like last night was a real weird one. Michelle Pfeiffer was there. It's like, where am I at? Like, what is going on? And, and, and there's, I saw this one lady who was talking about a place she went to in her dreams and she was talking about it. And then other people were like, oh, I've been there. I've been there. Cause it's not in here. It's other realities. We shift around. We go to other places and other realities. And we're all not allowed. Uh, you know, we're still, it's, it's like a containment still. Like we can't go too far away from the what we're birthed into. This uh, suit. It's not even a suit. It's like this, it's like a glove. It's like a fucking tablecloth. I don't know what to call it. And, um, but it gives you, the ability to feel your reality to have a whole nother level of what it is like what was that one too was it a scientist i don't think it was that ash ashtar is the one that they're always fucking this kinetic guy though uh i don't think it was him but saying about uh the the vehicle thing and the experience what was he saying though now that just went out of my head I'll just keep talking. But so, um, but Ashtar's that other guy that they're always channeling. It was channeling Commander Ashtar. This is the first one I've heard of kinetic, but uh, you know, they're all channeling 
the same people, which I had heard a long while ago too, because somebody was out there saying they were channeling Seth and the woman who, you know, it's the same with Raw and stuff like, but this is the woman who originally channeled Seth. Then there's a whole thing about that. I can't remember, but they were like, it's like you would be channeling someone else's higher self. Like you can't, you, you can't just go, well, I'm, I'm channeling Seth now too. Like there was a whole thing. I don't remember it because, you know, because the lady who was channeling Seth was a long time ago. Uh, she was, I, when the four, I think it was the sixties. Cause there was a lot going on in the sixties about ESP, about telepathy, about, um, you know, we were going in a certain direction. That's why they had to hit us hard with the drugs and the perms and uh, the fluoride. They're like, they're like, oh, hell no. We can't have them go this direction. Because everybody's hair was long. Everybody's all like, yeah, just smoke some weed. Get in touch with the earth. Walk around barefoot. Nobody cared. And then, it, uh, you know, they made quick change. <laughs> quick change McGraw. And to get us to go in a different direction. But everybody jumped on like, hell yeah. Who cares about sitting around barefoot with long hair in the woods smoking weed? I want to get out there and cut my hair off and run around trying to chase this little fucking carrot they're dangling. So they turned the direction and then so many people, you know, started falling off, going into drugs and alcohol. And they knew that that was going to be a detriment to society. It was done on purpose. And I mean, we've never seen the patterns before. <clears throat> but anyways, we were going in a good direction there for a while. Everybody was into telepathy and stuff. But then, um, those scientists that were working at that one college who were the, the ones who were um, did the book of one they were channeling raw and putting all that information out there was a woman who was channeling seth and she put up out a bunch of information you can look up her stuff and um he was saying a bunch of stuff and i don't i don't remember if the, like raw was talking about the stuff that's happening on the planet you know it was like a bigger I know Seth may have been more like mine or trying to explain how to live better. I don't know about Bashar. I just see like little things every once in a while. But when I had seen that as the other person started saying they were channeling Seth, it became a big thing where people were like, you can't channel that. You can't do that. And um, you can't just call, I say a name and say you're channeling them. And, uh, and, and then plus there's a the whole thing about, you know, this is your higher self. This is your connection. So, like, I, I don't, like, I don't ask mine their names and shit, like I've said before. And I know there's a lot. And I know I've had a lot of different ones that I don't channel on a regular basis come in and tell me stuff. I've seen them. I've heard them. I, you know, like I, in the, in the weird things will happen too, where it's like, uh, where I started seeing these are other aspects of me or these are other uh, from me from another life or the people who I was involved with in another life like um, and I was getting that because of um, when I was outside that one day gardening I've told this story before and I was outside gardening and all of a sudden I wasn't outside gardening anymore I was sitting in this like squatting position and I was oriental it was like I don't know Korean or uh, I was, we were little tiny, little tiny women, and we were all in this crouching, and we were all doing this little thing, and we're all just hanging out talking, and I felt so a part of something, and we definitely didn't have money, I mean, we, we what we had was connection, it's not even cry, because I could feel it so much, and it was, you know, they're always showing me what's important, and I so saw I was sitting there all of a sudden, and this was, uh, you know, after, my dark night. This is when a lot of stuff started happening. And so I was um, crouching down there with them. And I was just, it was cool. It was really cool. I was like in this other place for however long it was. And then all of a sudden I was back in my garden. It had a profound effect on me. And then it was during the same time when I would go in the shower. <laughs> and this drunk Indian would come in and he would start talking to me and he was just hilarious but I could always tell he was drunk and I don't know if that was his persona in life or what but he was very familiar to me he didn't scare me or anything and he was so fucking smart and profound he would always be telling me things that I would just be like whoa 
oh my gosh. And then I go out and try and tell people, oh my God, this guy who comes in my shower, this drunk Indian guy, and they all be like, okay, she really lost her shit you know? <laughs> like people don't understand. Like I'm really talking to people. They think that I, this is all happening in my head. It's like, this isn't, well, it is happening in my head, but I'm tuned into something that you guys are unaware of. And um, I mean, uh, but I've been shamed through my whole life. It's just stripping me out to get to this point of being able to be like, I told y'all, I told y'all this was real. <laughs> Even though I'm so stifled and it's so irritating. Yesterday I saw Russell Brand talking and he's like saying something. It's like all so profound. It's like, fuck dude, I said that two motherfucking years ago. But yeah, cool. And so um, anyways, I was, um, uh, so during that time, and then there was this other woman who, I don't know, she wasn't a chief, but she was like an elder. She was like very respectful. And she would come in, it would be like a giant head, like, and I could feel her energy. And she would, but it was totally different the way that it, the, the, the Indian guy in the shower would present his stuff to me. And um, those ones, I felt like uh, this is, you know, back when I was a part of a tribe, this is people who I was with. These are people who I was around or something. Um, you know, there's some kind of connection. And that's what I'm saying is like you're channeling something you're connected to. You can't channel someone else's connection. And then it's very confusing about all these people who keep channeling these name dropping channelers. That's what I said. You know, it's weird to me. And the, the, but there's more coming out about that now. So I find that interesting. But yeah, especially, you know, how they're all channeling Archangel Michael. And then it's like, that that guy was saying, you know, that they're really channeling these uh, commander, these people who are, you know, it's like a militant com uh, uh, patrol that is ke keeping us contained and they're talking to them or something, which is very interesting. You know, I don't know all this stuff. So, um, you know, I know what I'm, I know what I'm supposed to know, I guess. But anyways, so it's weird about the whole channeling thing and you know tapping into your higher self your your library you know not anybody else can tap into yours but then there's this this whole overall knowledge out there that we're all connected to but it all is very dependent on where you are on your level and so it's um you know it's complicated it's complex um i want to say this uh, other thing too uh, oh, because I was watching this movie yesterday. So you can watch it. It's called May, December. I don't know if you want to watch it. But it was, um, it's brand new. It has Natalie Portman and Julia Moore. And it is uh, based on Mary Letourneau. If that's how you say her name, Letourneau. Mary, Mary Kay Letourneau. The teacher who got together with the student and that whole drama. And then they ended up married and had kids and all that stuff. And um, so it's based on that story. And so one of my daughters yesterday, she had said, we, we, we did go a couple steps backwards, but you know, I'm not gonna stress out about it because that's the way cycles work. And so I, um, she said uh, about watching, I was like, okay, well, I'm, in, I'm intrigued now. So I went to watch it and I was not expecting what I got at all. And um, it was very, triggering I, I mean I don't I can't imagine somebody who has gone through a sexual abuse watching that not being triggered by things like I but then I see things that other people don't see and I'm always having to explain things that I see all the time it's like and then people will be irritated like like you look a little too into it you like you see things like it's always a put off it's not like oh cool yeah I hadn't thought of that let's talk about it remember that reaction and so, um, this, uh, my one daughter though, she, after I'd said some stuff, she went and watched it because she had the other daughter who was telling her too, the one who's not talking, I guess she'd been watching it too. And she was very triggered and she was saying, you know, this is horrible. And so I, I didn't know that part. I had just had the one daughter say, has anybody watched this? And I was like, no. And she's like, it's, uh, it's about the story, whatever. And she was just saying about the style of how they made the movie. And 
So I start watching. I'm two minutes in, I think, and I'm like, what the fuck? Like, oh my God, this is horrible. And uh, it, I just was building from there to a point I was just like, oh my God. I was just outraged. And it was very, uh, and there's certain things that I saw, uh, and I've talked about this before, because when really young people, I've said this so many times, I, you know, because I was somebody who got together, you know, not as a formed person, as a young, attractive girl who, you know, they just like the young, attractive girl. They don't give a fuck about what's inside of her. Like, keep that to yourself, weirdo. And so you are, and if you don't have any de definition of self, you're still out there in the world like, you know, who am I? What am I? And you're coming out of a toxic household. Then you are, it's like going through life. Are you my mother? Are you my mother? Well, if I please you, will you be? You know, you're, you're looking for something in other people in a desperation of connection, of finding yourself. And then there's a lot of older people. They're, you know, they're living their same, you know, desperation, but then they can use you to make themselves feel better or get you to be the way they want and stuff. It's, it, there's an interference. There's some, there's something that it, it, it isn't work. And, you know, and I know that there's people who are like, I don't know, four, I want to say 40 with a 20 year old because that's sickening. Uh, you know, maybe a 55 year old with a 40 year old. And maybe they are at the same level because a lot of times when you get these really older guys like that, that they are a 50 year old with 36 year old or something, you get these older guys like that, they aren't mature. They're still caught up in ego and you know, they're caught up in like, oh my God, I'm getting older. I, I need to be attractive. I need these young girls to like me. You know, they get caught up in that uh, cycle of, you know, needing reassurance from young girls. And so uh, there's a whole toxicity in that develop that that stage too. But when you when you're older and you go to get together with people who are younger who are not yet formed, you are trying to form them into what you want, not allowing them to form into themselves. You're controlling and stifling who they are, and the pure person who's in that role doesn't realize it. And it's very clear to me. Like I see it. Like. You know, I, I see things that people don't see or something. Because I can see this shit so fucking clear. And so, the, um, and so when this one, this is so, it's so fucked up. Because the boy, he, she gets together with, he's in the seventh grade. When I was in the seventh grade, I was still in elementary school. And so, uh, she gets together with this kid in the seventh grade. And there's way more where it's like, you know, I, I think she set this up and he was uh, friends with her seventh grader. She had a seventh grader and he was a boy and she, uh, she starts working at this pet store and because they changed the story a little. So she's not a teacher, she's, but they look exactly like the people. And so she gets a job at this pet store, gets him a job at this pet store. Then they start doing it in the back room and get busted and the police get called. And this is when her family finds out that she's having an affair, not just to have an affair, but with a child, not just a child, but one that's in her son's class. And so um, this whole thing blows up and stuff. And she goes to jail, she, her husband and her get divorced. She, her kids don't have anything to do with her anymore, but she's very, uh, she doesn't think about things. She's very cut off from her own pain. And the whole time I'm like, this chick is sexually abused. There's no fucking way that she would be doing this. And um, it's just this cycle, so this toxic behavior of unhealed people. And the reverberation of how many people it affects is astronomical. Like we have to make changes of our behaviors. We have to heal our wounds. We can't just go around and pretend like we don't have any. It's absurd. And so she, um, so she goes to jail, I, I guess. She, um, somehow she gets together with this kid and gets pregnant. And so she ends up married to him and stuff. But I don't know if he had any time in there because she went to jail. So he should have had a little time to grow up. But when you see them together as a couple, that is like, 
she's with her son. The way she talks to him, the way she treats him, she doesn't treat him like a man. She doesn't treat him like an equal. And she's very controlling. She's very, um, she's so toxic. Oh my God, there's some scenes that are just blow you away. It's like, oh my God, have I ever done this? I apologize one daughter, if I've ever done this, I'm sorry. But I sure didn't mean it the way this lady. Like, so I'll tell you that one scene too. But in the, the, the overall thing with the husband and the wife, God damn it, I swear to God, I don't understand these fucking things. Uh, but the one thing that I was seeing was um, the this husband and wife thing was sticking out to me so much because he wasn't aging. He wasn't. He was very controlled. He was like a little boy still. Oh my God! I'm telling you everything. Something can go wrong. It is everything. It's wild to me right now. It's very frustrating. Everything is just Jack, man. Uh, it just, my thing just glitches. It'll just sit there glitching. It's glitching again. It'll just sit there and glitch for a while. It does this all the fucking time. This is, I'm living in some sort of glitch right now. It's very frustrating. There's a reason why I'm frustrated. <laughs> so the, um, the husband and wife, uh, their relationship is not a normal partnership. And she ridicules him on things that he even likes. Like he is really into um, butterfly monarchs and saving the monarch population. So he goes out in the woods and looks for their eggs, takes them into a habitat he's created so they stay safe, keeps them there until they hatch and become out to the butterfly. And then he goes and releases them. And so he, and she'll just call it your bugs. Get your bugs out of here and stuff. Like she's really rude. And he, um, and he's so, uh, people pleaser. He's very, you know, he's like a child still, like a abused young boy. And, man, I don't know what the hell this glitch has shit. I'm just going off of this one. Um, let's see what this one does now. All right. So then, um, so then the, uh, in the, okay, let me think. And that not only is she treating him still like he's a child, but he's starting to realize it with his kids now. His kids are about to graduate. He's got one in college, the one that was the first one she got pregnant with in college. She's very, looks down at her mom like, you know, you're, she's a psycho. Like her kids can see, like, lady, you, this is I'm like, like, what? Her kids can see. And it's clear when she's around her kids what they see and especially this older one but even the ones that are graduating high school right now the way that they treat her and the things they say to her is the same kind of thing where you can tell like they just look at her like you know she's uh not respectful they look at her like but they still they have a mom you know they still are getting a good even though they have this you know screwed up house it's still a child can adapt it, it, it can help them grow. That's why CPS is fucking all these people by taking them out of the house. But CPS is in big trouble. I saw that thing in front of Congress yesterday. So they're in trouble. They're going to get, uh, what do they call it? Because I just saw a lawyer talking and she's on a case in Arizona. And she was talking about a case that she has with a man and a woman. And the woman had got a DUI and went to jail. And so they gave the husband full custody, but the full, the husband was supposed to continue the relationship. Hold on a second. I don't know if you could hear that. Um, cooking beans because I'm going to go out to the store today so I was cooking these beans so I wanted to start them early but I could hear that they had run out of water so I had to run in and put water in them before they burned so anyways this woman in Arizona so she her husband got full custody but he's supposed to let her she's supposed to be able to see the kids and all this stuff well he didn't do that and he started talking smack on her started talking bad about her moved 
And so now this woman, three years in, she's two years sober. She has not been able to see her kids. And so she's got a lawyer and she's fighting for um, to see her kids and stuff. And the lawyer, the reason she was doing this TikTok to talk about it, she said, I've never seen this before, that this is, uh, if this is gonna go like this, this is where they make uh, a K, like they set a precedence, a precedence. I, they're setting a precedence, like this is big. And uh, it to me is what they're dealing with the CBS and stuff, like they're gonna call them out. Then it's gonna open it up to lawsuit, lawsuit, lawsuit. And so this would be kind of like the same kind of thing. So this woman, uh, the judge came out and said she went completely for the rights of the person who was getting fucked over, which the lady, the lawyer said, I've never seen this before. And it's wild. And she called us husband out on all the bullshit he had been doing. And so the, she said, this is, this is really big. I'll keep you guys updated, but I've never seen this before. We're, this is setting precedence over, you know, this, this occurrence, this is going to change law. This is big. And I was like, uh, it was really cool. And then, um, and then that's be the same thing with all these different ones going up against, you know, before judicial of some sort, Congress, uh, Supreme Court, whatever. But they're they're making these changes, so it's gonna change everything. It's gonna open things up, and so it's going to change our society. What what's okay and what's not okay, and so um, back on this movie in this relationship, so. Uh, is so controlled by this woman, which this woman's so toxic and she needs this control. So it's not helping her. She's just getting worse and worse. She's just like, she's a, she's a nightmare. She's so horrible that there's this one scene that's just outrageous. She, uh, her daughter's getting the dress to wear under her gown for graduation. And she goes and she's trying on the first one and it's very, you know, uh, prairie, uh, what is that called? Like old fashioned prairie dress or something. And she comes out and she's just, you know, she's a teenager. She's like, uh, uh, and her mom's carrying on and her mom's so self-centered. Oh my God. Nobody matters but her. She's so annoying. And this fucking kid husband just is always trying to please her. And he's just getting more and more lost. He's even talking to, cause he's in a face group, Facebook group with the monarchs and he's, you know, got a flirtation going with somebody. He's wanting to escape his life. He's getting to the point where he's he's beginning to question things. And I think it's because partly because his kids are bypassing him. They're maturing, going out, and this guy's still sitting back like a child. It's fucking heartbreaking, man. It's fucked. And um, and he's he's been so limited and controlled. And, and then he's Korean. He had come from this family that where the dad wasn't around. He had all this pressure on him that he had to be the parent of his younger, you know, so he was, uh, he didn't have a home where he felt really connected. There's a distance. And this is weird too, because this girl, this young girl was showing a subways in New York, which was wild. It's like, fuck. Yeah, I mean, they, they just caught the certain footage, but dang it's wild down there like it's fucking streets of what is that new york uh kurt russell movie when they made new york into just a prison state and it was just wild just like that and but there's a lot going on there you know this is that you know the exposing of all this stuff and um confirmation and and so uh but she's then showing one in China and showing how the people are all just calmly sitting there. Nobody's talking, nobody's saying anything. They're all still sitting there on the subway and then walking through it. They just walk and they all have these on and then just walk around. Nobody pays any attention. Nobody is fighting or anything like that. It's like, chick, you know, you're trying to make a uh, a point but you gotta compare apples to oranges like these people over here are disconnected they're not interacting they don't show their upset they don't show their anger they're disconnected from themselves i mean there's a whole thing about uh there's tons of these videos like somebody gets hit by a car in the street people just walk by they're disconnected they don't give a shit somebody's laying there dying they step over them they they're disconnected 
at least here we have people who are still have passion they're still fighting for something there they're disconnected and so she's trying to show like how much better they are it's like dude i don't want to go into a disconnected society where we're all just you know we don't even have the fucking viewfinder on it's like man if you're gonna be that disconnected you may as well live in the meta fuck dude so um uh, so anyways this girl uh who the daughter she's trying on this dress and she comes out in a prairie dress mom's oh my god it's so perfect so perfect and she's like i don't like it and then she um goes in to try on another one and it's more of a sundress like the other girls in class oh, now it's pouring they're wearing sundresses and so she comes out and she's all excited you know like if you've ever seen a teenage girl feeling good she's all excited and walking out like smiling big it's heartbreaking. It's absolutely heartbreaking. This is a scene that stuck out to all my daughters. And I apologize if I said, if I've ever done or said anything like this to you, I'm really sorry. And so she goes, and she's standing there all confident. And her mom goes, oh, you know, I just really look up to you. You know, the fact that you can just show your arms like that. You know, I wish I had that same confidence, not being able to meet the beauty standards and still be able to go out there and show your arms. Like that is really, I really look up to you for that. And the daughter just like shrivels. I mean, you can see it. It's like painful. Oh, and she shrivels. You know, I think we've all been there at some point. Somebody's made us lose our confidence. And she goes back in and tries on another one that then covers her arms. And she comes out, you know, and she's like, yeah, I like it. It's pretty, you know, and you see her, she's looking in the mirror and the mom's all like, oh, that's perfect. It looks so good. And it's just so lovely. And then the, um, the girl's like, yeah, I like it. But you can see the difference and when she really liked it. And then you can see now she's basing what she on her insecurities. Just like that girl I talked about a long while ago, who, when they were doing makeup when she was a little kid, and she, um, you know, her aunt put mascara on her, and then everybody was carrying on, oh my God, you look so good with mascara. Oh my God, your lashes are so beautiful. And just carrying on and carrying on. So ever since she was seven years old, she felt insecure if she didn't have uh, mascara on. And she, at this point, when she was doing the video, she was like, late 30s 40s or something like that and she said this is something she's carried her whole life and so now she's trying to put the mascara down and be like i don't need the mascara i'm fine without the mascara but see how the plays on your mind and so to watch that mom take away that girl's confidence like that and make her hyper aware now of her arms it's like her arms are perfectly normal there was nothing wrong with her arms like what the fuck are you talking about these are child arms anyways it's not like she's and waving and, you know, it's like, you know, but you get hyper-focused. See, we've all got hyper-focused and beat down on things. And so we all we internalize, you know, we're not good enough, not good enough. Because we, it still smells like it's burning. Oh, it's probably something on the burner. Oh, I need to be probably uh, finishing anyways. Because I feel like I've got so much to do. Fuck. It's, uh... I want to get this downloaded too before I go. And some of the days it just takes so motherfucking long. But so the okay, hold on, let me go check because it smells like it's burning. I'll turn it down. So, anyways, the the mom um you know she and i don't even know why she did that to her child it's just like she's just likes to beat people down around her or something it's weird it's because she's so fucking toxic she's not healed and then um and so you have this actress who's coming to uh who's going to play the part so you have natalie portman who's coming julianne moore is playing you know mary or turn out but except her name's not that in this movie. And Natalie Portman's coming to learn, you know, to hang out with her, to see what she's like. She's going to play her in this movie. And so it seems when Natalie Portman comes, she's a lot more of a people pleaser. She's very, um, 
you know, because they have a scene where she's like talking to her boyfriend and he's like, are you even paying attention? Yes, yes, even though she's trying to do something else. She's trying to make sure, you know, he feels, you know, acknowledged or something. So she puts herself aside and doesn't do what she wants because she's people pleasing. So you see that part. But as it goes and she spends more time with this woman who has no care about anybody but herself, there's even conversations with the woman. And she's like, well, I don't think about the pet. Like, what? You think about things you did wrong? Why would you do that? Why would you think about something that happened yesterday? And then you sit and think about, like, why you shouldn't have done it. And Natalie Portman was like, well, you know, because? Like, there's parts where it's like, you know, you see this, it's like total antisocial behavior, disconnected. And then, you know, yeah, you should go into times of reflection. You should be, you know, thinking about what you do and how you uh, approach people and the things you've done and learn from it. Like, what? But Natalie Portman starts becoming more feeding off of her energy. And she starts, you can see, like, this dark energy start to take her over. Like, and I'm sure as an actor or whatever, they've got to pull from, you know, you've got these two sides. You've got to pull from that other side. And don't forget, I said it can be intoxicating, especially if you've been a people pleaser and you've cut off. This dark energy will, you know, pat you on the back. And so um, it's, it's very intoxicating. And so she, in herself, has to start drawing on this other energy where she starts, you know, like there's a conversation and her boyfriend is annoying her. And this time she says, Oh, well, I've got another call. I gotta go. And it cuts him off. So you can see, okay, so she's starting to, you know, change here. She's becoming different. And um, I, and there's some parts too, like she goes and talks to the kids' school and she talks about acting and, you know, how you can get lost. Like this boy asks her like, oh, well, have you done sex scenes? So there's a long thing about that that she talks about. <clears throat> and she says, you know, I, you keep playing this part over and over the sexy thing with this person and it starts feeling good you start getting really into it where it starts messing with your head and you start feeling like it's more real and then she said there's a part where you start being like um, am I acting to act like it's not real or am I acting to act like it's real she said it's very confusing and um, so I can see when you're constantly trying to be somebody else and act like someone else, you got to pull from what's inside of you. You got to face dark sides of yourself in order to pull it forward, to play these parts. And, you know, I can see how that a lot of these people get all twisted up in their heads and stuff. And so, you know, so she says this stuff. There was more stuff at that when she's talking to this high school class. But then um, you can see her transitioning like through the thing but she goes and she talks to different people about this lady like she talks to the ex-husband she talks to the person that owns the pet store she talks to the lawyer she just goes and talks to these different people to get different perspectives around this woman and um the woman is such a dark character she's such a wounded animal who just lashes out at everyone around her and so uh, her, even her daughter comes back, the college daughter comes back from this graduation, and you can tell they're not close at all. The college daughter just looks down on her like, ugh, like she doesn't even really like her. And um, and then this boy, who's 36 now, which is the same age that Mary was when she started the affair with him, so he's now reached the age of where she had the affair with him when he was 13. And he's 36 now, and so is Natalie Portman, who is there playing her. She's 36, so they have all these kinds of things, uh, you know, these relatable things happening, you know, this stuff happening in this movie. Uh, it depends on, you know, what level you're watching it. And so the, um, but she goes and she fucking gets the same motherfucking dress that she told her daughter not to get because it, uh, you know, shows your arms too much. She goes and gets it and goes around wearing it. I don't, it wasn't like the exact, because the girls had a bow on the back, and this one didn't, but it was the same white dress with the little thing. It's so like, oh my God, what is wrong with this woman? Like, what the fuck? You're supposed to be helping your kids build them up to put them out into the world and have confidence. Like, I know we're not all perfect. I know we all make mistakes, and that the mistakes that are made against us are there for us to fix, for us to get to 
champion ourselves by overcoming things. Like life is seriously is not about the things that happen to you. It's what you do with them. That's what it's about. And so, um, uh, the, oh, when she goes, she when she's talking to the lawyer, she's in this bar and the oldest son, so all you ever hear about, because the oldest son and her husband were friends. And it, when she's having dinner, when Natalie Portman's having dinner with them one night, she's asking her, like, uh, asking him, well, do you ever talk to Georgie anymore? And he's like, no, we've never talked since. And, um, and then the mom, she's always saying weird stuff. Like every conversation, you're like, what? So that whole weird thing, like she's just a game player. But so, uh, you know, and, and she blames everything on their kids. It's always, well, you know, George is just sensitive. He was, he's always been sensitive. Even at this dinner when her one son, he, she starts trying to talk down to him and tell him that, like what he needs to do and eat and stuff. And this, the husband's totally passive. And um, the kid is like, uh, can I be excused? He's little slaves. He doesn't want and to even sit with her and have dinner with her and ask the dad. And the dad says, yeah, go ahead. And then the mom is just like, um, oh, my God, boys are so difficult. She's just always blaming. She never takes responsibility. Like, maybe you shouldn't be telling him, you know, uh, what to eat. He's not, he's not big enough and muscly enough to go to college. And I mean, she's just weird. She's just weird. And, um, and controlling, trying to force him to eat dinner by making him feel insecure. And so the, and the you know, all this stuff is affecting the husband. But the, when she goes, when Natalie Portman goes to have dinner with the, the lawyer and she's getting more information from him where, you know, she's seeing more of the, this is a fake world that this lady has created around her that's not real. And the Georgie is there. And so there's a, a band playing and it's not a good band. And the singer is out of control, goes over and starts hitting the drummer. It's like wacky. And then, so the lawyer looks over and goes, there's Georgie. <laughs> and so then Georgie sees the lawyer, comes running over, starts eating off their plates and drinking out of their drinks. And he's just like, you know, he just didn't give a fuck. And then um, he says a bunch of stuff. And so you really see like, man, she really fucked her kids up by what she did. And then she just abandoned them, like, you know. And because there's a whole thing about this graduation too, that there's grand, her grandkids are also graduating with her kids. So her, uh, some of her kids had grown up and had kids that are the same age as her second set of kids because her older daughter is graduating college. So there's some age thing there which I was trying to figure out, like, do the numbers, like, okay, so if that one's 36, and then that one, so then they have it, you know, it's like, I couldn't put it all together. Um, and I don't know how accurate it is to the real story. I went and looked up to see, did this guy get remarried? Because I know the real Mary died of cancer. And, um, you know, but he had divorced her. He said he divorced her in 1999 and moved to Alaska with another woman and got married to her and had more kids. So he did break a, break free finally from his abuser and, um, you know, got to grow up. But who knows? He's probably always delayed, stifled in some way because he missed all these years of development because it was under the control of the perpetrator and <clears throat> who was very controlled over. She, I mean, she tried and turn things back on him. You know, like, that he was the one who started it. It's like, chick, you were the adult. You were the fucking grown-up. Fucking tur keep turning this on him and whack. And so, uh, then later, even Georgie, so they go to this big dinner for graduation. They go to this fancy restaurant. And then her other family comes in. And it's a big family. And they all come in. And there's a it's weird, weird interaction with all them. And then, um, so later, Natalie Portman's out in front of the restaurant with Georgie again. And that is when Georgie starts telling her that, uh, you know how she's always talking about her brothers, right? You know, she's got the two older brothers and the two younger brothers. Well, they were doing it with her since she was 12. And Natalie Portman's just like shocked. It's like, how did you not see that coming? And I saw that coming as soon as, like, as soon as you see any of this shit, it's like, 
This chick has been sexually abused, no doubt about it. Like, there's no fucking way. And, um, but she's in denial. She's not doing her healing. She's not doing her work. So she's just reverberating her pain and suffering out on everyone else, crashing everybody else's life around them, making them have to pick it up. But it's on so many levels, because then on a spiritual level, like, I can get, you know, why these things are the way they are. But when you watch, like, when we think about how we need to change, it's a clear and so when he's out there talking to her and tells her, you know, that she's sexually abused since she was a kid with her brothers and uh, there's a whole thing about that and she's in denial. You can't ask her about it or anything. And um, I don't even know how Julianne Moore found out about this conversation because she comes up and says, you know, Georgie was lying about my brothers. So I don't know if Georgie told her. And she said, well, I talk to Georgie every day. It's like, Georgie doesn't even like you. But who knows, because they can be getting these weird things like the, I, I hate you, but I need you. And that's a whole pattern that develops. It's like, I hate this parent. I don't want anything to do with them. But then you need them because you, if, if you push them away, then you feel the rejection. You feel the abandonment. So you pull them back in. So there's this real uh, push and pull that goes on in these toxic relationships that is a big thing that has to be overcome because it's you know it's super toxic nobody's living their best lives and it's just crazy as this core person how many people that she could affect when you watch the movie and you see how many persons one person's trauma can affect it is mind-blowing how many and and then you know of course on the soul level i get like why people come in because then you know you can come in and be the curse breaker you can come in and be the one that changes it all so there's reasons why all this stuff goes down and occurs. You know, it's not like all happening accidentally. Like these things play out for a reason. These are roles being played out for learning and growing. And there's just a lot of, but when you get this perspective, watching the movie and actually seeing where the nucleus of the pain, because the pain would go further back from her, but the pain as she moves forward in life, the pain that she reverberates out and the control and trying to keep herself feeling okay and how she affects other people. And then just weird things like, you know, this passive aggressive bullshit with her daughter, like telling her that that dress looks horrible on her, oh, but in a very passive aggressive way. And then going and getting the same dress and walking around in it. It's just like, it's wacky, man. It's so toxic and so passive aggressive. And then when you watch this young man and then, uh, and then how Natalie Portman, she just gets darker and darker in the movie and just feeds off of this gross ass toxic energy. It even ends with that, just like how far down she went. And it's just like, oh man, it's disturbing that movie. I don't believe it, but it really shows a lot of, I think, important psycho psychological interactions with people. But I see this same type of pattern when older men get together with younger women and the young girls don't have any uh, state of being yet they're still you know they're still forming into who they're going to become and then they get with somebody who's older who knows best for them they know what's best you you need to be this way you need to be that way so then you have this control over your development which is you know another person's not supposed to uh, like even when I was raising my kids there was so much of letting them figure themselves out. Like I wasn't always trying to tell them, but like I said before, that that kind of blew up a little bit because I didn't realize the significance of the my partner shrouding them in the only way it can be. There's one way to do things. This is the only way to be and stuff. And there's more and more of that that keeps coming out. Like when my daughter went out of town to go to the Thanksgiving that he did and she said that it's just as weird some of the conversations you'll have with him because like i've said before he's so connected to birds and nature and stuff like that but he's not connected at all to real to the soul like it's i don't know how to explain it it's just very strange but there's other people in the family who are noticing it and she was saying you know because they were talking about something and she, and she says something about spiritual stuff and then he's like starts laughing at you thinks you're so ridiculous and stuff it's strange and uh, you know I've always been confused by that that was one thing is even when we got together 
you know, I thought it was a pretty safe bet. Uh, you know, this guy's liked me for fucking 10 years. And he has gone through this metamorphosis, going to this thing where getting in touch with himself. And then I say, well, you know, I really want to have a spiritual relationship. I want it to be based on, you know, being spiritual. And people don't even understand what that means. It's being deeper. It's looking at things from a different perspective, a higher perspective. What is this really about? What's really happening here? What is really, you know, it's different. And when you're being caught up in the bullshit. And so he, um, you know, he was like, oh, yeah, yeah, I want to, too. And then, you know, so I, and he was all into nature and camping and birds and uh, just uh, everything that was where you would think he was connected to the soul of the planet. But no, it's, it's weird. And, um, you know, I, I mean, this is getting interesting to even watch because he's so... 3d in so many other ways but then he's got his arrogance and his connection but yeah our relationship did not go in a spiritual direction <laughs> at all it went into a direction of me wanting to escape it and feeling like i was in hell but then when i look back and i see like oh my god i did sell my soul at that one point and i did go against my own self for money and it did start a whole succession of events that occurred to teach me um, in that direction as everything is to teach you, you know, it's the repercussions, it's the, 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 not con the consequences, the consequences of your actions, that there is more to it. Just like there's a lot of people who are doing a lot of shitty things that don't seem to understand that there's a karmic balance that has to occur. It's not a joke. It's not like a, well, you know, maybe in your crazy world, in the supernatural, weird world that you think exists. It's like, dude, that's the real world. You're like, I don't know where the fuck you are. But yeah, there's a balance. You got to put it back in. So you're out there fucking people over and doing fucked up things to people. It's going to come back on you. All the shit you put out, it's going to come back on you. And right now, that's big too. Because it's got nowhere else to go but back on you. This is the flipping of the energy. So all of the toxic bullshit is going to come back on you. That's why people are feeling so much pain. So much of um, it's hitting them at once. So many people are being overwhelmed, drowning in their own consequence. Because of that's just how it works. There's no getting away from it. You, even if you try and do yourself in, which you can't do yourself in unless that's the way you were always going to go. But even if you try, you can't get away from it. You're going to go right to your life review. Then you're going to feel everybody else's pain that you had caused. Then you've got to go and figure out how to put it all back in balance. you got to go back into other lives to fix it. You can't, you can't fix something out there. I mean, there's a reason that people go in and do this shit. And, and it's, what was that too? Was that a scientist or was it this kinetic or who was this one? Cause they said, maybe it was Bashar saying it. I don't know. I see all these little things, you know, as I'm looking for what's going on in the world, what's going on in the world. And, um, but they're saying that you got to realize you are in an, uh, like I'll say it like a dream or a lucid dream or something, but they said you're in a, it, it, they didn't say a thought, they didn't say a fantasy, but it was the same kind of thing. I can't think of the exact word they use, but th none of this is real. This is, uh, it's like a dream. You're like in a dream, you're in a lucid dream, <clears throat> and you are birthed into. So you have to, in order to come into this reality, but, but there's other people, but it depends on what part of the reality. Because if you think like earth, the earth reality, well, earth has multiple levels, has multiple realms. It's, we are in one area, the area that we are in, the world that we exist in. That is what you have to be birthed into. These other ones, there's beings coming from other, like there's a lot of shit going on. So you can't be sitting there thinking that all the earth is the same. No, the place that we exist in, our realm, our vibration, you have to be birthed into the experience. You have to go through another to come into the experience, which I don't get how it all works because 
it's like we're thought forms. And so your thought form goes through another thought to come into the thought form. But then when you come into the thought form, it's like you go into like this, this glove so that you can feel and experience what it is that's there as an energy so that you can get a view, a vision, but that still is a dream. Like you can leave here and go into other ones. That, uh, but, w but when you get in here, you can't leave here until the time is up because it's destiny. There's a destined thing. It's, and I think so many people, like this is huge to me in the spiritual community because they're always telling people like, oh, well, you can manifest, you can do this. You got to change into your best time. You got to do this, you got to do that. And I feel like there's so many people out there that are just so frustrated. Like, I must not be doing it right. I can't do it. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't, you know, and they just get so messed up by this, um, this, uh, to me, ridiculousness it is destiny. You are on a ride. There's, you can't, you, you don't have the control. What you have control over is your attitude, is how you react, what you do. You know, like if you get fucked over by all these people and then you turn around and start fucking everybody else over, then, then that is for your soul to see. Uh, you get fucked over by people and then you turn around and you start doing good for people. Like, I don't want people to feel bad. That is what your soul to see. It's for you to see yourself in the thing and then plus the, then it gets into this whole thing of like they're playing parts and stuff and um and you're birthed into it's like you're birthed into a game it's like a you know those mystery dinners where there's a murder mystery dinner it's like that group of people like you're going in with a group of people to play out your your mystery dinner and so you are birthed in, but your part is set. The part you're playing is set. And it's a destined event. These things are all gonna happen. And like I said, when you're not paying attention to the here and now, you're missing a lot of parts. And then, uh, but the people who keep trying to tell people that you need to, you know, change your, I don't know, change your timelines and shit like that. The thing that you have to change is your attitude. It's how you look at things. I keep getting so fucking dizzy. The ground is, keeps shaking and that's why I keep thinking, is this also affecting Stella? Because she definitely saw that big black thing go through here. It was huge too, it was huge. And um, and is it vibrating? It's vibrating again right now. And then it'll get really, really dizzy. It's like, it's weird. It's weird too, like I can be outside and I'll be walking around like I'm not going out walking but I'll just be out like getting wood or whatever walking just in the yard and I'll feel like oh my god I feel like I'm on drugs or something it feels so weird everything feels so weird and I you know I know everything is changing and um one of these people I don't remember if it was this kinetic or Bashar or something said it's gonna keep feeling like that you're gonna keep feeling these same things for the next couple of years and uh but uh, like I said I think that it's going to be the, the people who were more in observation, like we're all gonna be moving slots up. Like those of us uh, who are more aware and awake, we're, it's gonna flip over and then we're gonna start having better things happening for us and stuff. So there will be things that will start becoming better and then that will be the second wave and the third wave, like it's all these different, uh, it's like pegs or cogs in a wheel. And, 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 and so it's, uh, it's a movement, it's, uh, it's a development. And uh, so anyways, but you know, don't get caught up in them saying the stuff they say because it is destiny. You are on this ride for this ride. You can't get off this ride and change it. You can't change who you're gonna meet. You can't change what's inevitable. You know, it's just the way it is and um, you know, no matter what goes down with me, like, uh, you know, for me, uh, you know, if I've been off on what they've been showing me and telling me and I've been making up my own story somehow in there, um, you know, I will get over it. You know, I feel like I, there's this, a certain person who I've got to see face to face. Once I see them face to face, I'll know, I'll know immediately. Like once, um, once your eyeballs touch, it's like, okay, 
oh, no, okay, there's nothing there, and I was off on my stuff, or okay, like I will know. And so, you know, I mean, there's just things that it's just kind of like, well, we'll see what happens, we'll see what happens, you know, in our life. And, you know, that's just the way it is. You, you can't go and just change stuff because you don't like in the direction it's going. It's you have to change your attitude. You have to get a good, you know, find the, the joyful part of your spirit to, and the deeper part of understanding of what you're doing here and why you're here and what you're going through and the purpose. But don't get caught up in this, these spiritual teachings that got people, it's just wacky. Like even yesterday, uh, you know, I said there was a couple steps backwards. I was um, talking to my daughter and, you know, she's, uh, sometimes I think she's just lonely and she just wants me to be on the phone with her while she's doing stuff. And um, so I was talking, you know, this shit ass weather, I feel like shit, it still feels like shit. And it's, you know, it's a lot of intense energy at my house and stuff. It's just wearing on me. And, you know, she's always like, well, you got to change them. You got to manifest it. You got to make a difference. You got to, you know, look at it different and stuff like that. And it's like, well, look at it. Like, uh, and it's all different people have all different attitudes, you know. And so I said, I don't think that you are supposed to, you know, you're supposed to feel what you feel. You're not supposed to say, well, I'm not supposed to feel bad. I feel bad, so I'm not allowed to feel bad. That's low vibration, so I've got to change from feeling bad. You've got to process through whatever you're feeling. I mean, you're feeling it for a reason, but you've got to be interactive with it, reflective. And, you know, that's what I've come to in my understanding is that it happens for a reason and that to, you, to feel your feelings and to acknowledge them and to be aware of them not shame them and say you need to get rid of them empty out the toolbox I only want the pretty shiny ones it's like no you've got to accept all parts of yourself and but that is part of these spiritual teachings now of you know staying high vibration ignoring everything that bothers you it's like that is no way to live you can't just ignore things like that you can't just pretend like things aren't happening and turn the other way bury your head in the sand I'm not looking it bothers me and so there was a whole discussion about that, you know, because she's setting her boundaries and I'm not supposed to bring her down with my attitude. It's like, okay, okay, well, yeah, you can't, you got to set your boundaries. You can't be consumed by another or that to set her off. It's like, okay, well, there's so many things I say that I don't think you hear what I'm really saying or you're just trigger happy and you just can't wait to jump down my throat for any little thing. I don't know. But it's like, okay, I just, uh, but definitely, you know, um, I definitely gave me another thing of like, well, I don't think you're going to really want to talk to me today because I'm in a downer mood. So let's, let's just leave it alone today. And then, you know, that's what I'm going through right now, you know, and I feel like I'm supposed to, I'm supposed to be purging this out. I'm supposed to be seeing this like it wouldn't be happening to me if it weren't, if it was supposed to be different. So, and I am going through a lot. I'm getting woke up every, uh, I'm going into these deep, deep sleep where I'm going into weird places and then getting jolted awake. It's just nonstop all fucking night long and I feel exhausted. I feel out of it. And then the poisoning and the sickness and then, you know, the, you know, there's a lot, there's just a lot. So it's, it's intense. You know, I'm supposed to just pretend. I'm supposed to stress myself out. And oh, I just got to stay in my happy place. Stay in my happy place. It's like, where's my happy place? How do I find it? It's like, you know, when I'm in my happy place, I'm in my happy place. And when I'm in my sad place, I'm in my sad place. And, you know, this is sad right now. And my dog's sick. The weather's fucked. I haven't seen the sun in a goddamn long time. And uh, it's dark. Like, it was fucking dark yesterday morning until it was, like, almost 9.30. It was fucking dark as fuck. Then by 2.30 or 3, it's dark again. By 3.30, I'm shutting... By, by 3 o'clock, I'm shutting the curtains. It's so dark. Because then it's, like, it's, you know, like a fishbowl. It's, like, we're barely getting any light. It's raining nonstop. And, you know, I mean, everybody can look at it how they want to look at it. People want to see, well, you just look at negative things. You're just always looking at the negative. No, I'm not. I'm paying attention to what's going on in the world. It's like, 
yeah, it's pretty negative right now. And well, that's very scary to some people. You know, it's like, well, it shouldn't be. We're in a time of transition. We're in a time of transformation. We're in a time of shedding what was old. So I think that you need to be aware. You probably need to be shedding that shit. And so, but anyways, when the, when this, when it turns, that is going to become crystal clear to people. People are going to see things that they hadn't seen before. They're going to see themselves in a different way. They're going to understand things in a different way. It's going to open up more. So, you know, it's going to be great when this light really, it's like the light, is, to me, it's always like the light is just going to come on. It's going to be this bright light that's going to come on. But still, we got to go through these parts, which is going to be, those other guys were saying, it's going to be a couple of years. Um, but then there's going to be this magnificent solar flash thing that is going to, you know, the rebirth of our world that will happen. But we have to go through all this stuff to realize who and what we are so that we aren't affected. We're energy. We can go through this change with the planet. We, we can also be a part of it. We're not going to, because if you're flesh and blood, like you can see these people panicking, they're flesh and blood and the solar fly, like they're all caught up and like everybody's going to die. There's so many people out there. We're all going to die. It's the end. It's the end. It's like, no, this is a transition. This is the ending and the beginning. There's no just ending. There's always a beginning. So, but something has to end to have a beginning. Where would the beginning come from? So we're at the end of something and the beginning of something else. And what's wild is all these souls knew that before they signed up. But how did they get so caught up in the storyline that they forgot? How are they all so scared of everything? How are they all so disconnected from themselves? How are they so caught up in pleasing one another and being so hung up on being governed? Governed is mind control. It's, it's even in their fucking thing. Uh... If somebody looked it up, what does go being governed mean? And it means to control one's mind. So, and I've been saying for a long time, I don't need to be governed. I don't need to be controlled by these people. All these people who hang on that, you know, they need to be controlled still. That's the soul's development. We're all here at different levels. So, anyways, you know, I don't know how much stuff I'm just repeating. You know, I don't know. I'm going to do these. I don't even know. <laughs> I'm just saying what I'm, I'm saying, what I see, saying what I'm going through. And uh, my uh, view is always, you know, we can do better. We can do better, but you got to pay attention to what's going wrong. How are you going to do better if you just ignore what's going wrong? You got to see the truth. You, in order to make change, you got to see what's there. So it's important. So, yeah, I'm going to keep saying what I see and how I see it. And that there is a false teaching and spirituality that is going on. And I think it is to you know, keep people more stagnant, keep people more trapped because people jump onto it and believe it. And it is a completely keeping you trapped in the world that they've created. So it's all the things is breaking free, break free from their, um, the mind control that they have on you. Start witnessing things, start paying attention and always, always ask yourself, why am I doing this? Why am I doing that? What did I do that for? Do I need to do that? What am I trying to get here? What am I trying to do here? Like just constantly question yourself and go into conversations in your mind. Now I feel like my stuff is burning again, but I really need to go like, so anyways, um, you know, we'll see how this keeps going. We'll just keep on open at any moment. It's, it's, it, at any moment, it is all gonna crash. Like the money's gonna crash, the government's crashing. Like all this stuff is crashing. It's, you know, it's pretty tedious because, you know, people are being exposed and there's a lot of shit being exposed, but that's what people have to see. And the people who are ignoring it, it's going to all hit them at once. They're going to be impacted in a very severe way because of their ignoring shit. So anyways, it's all going to keep playing out. I mean, there's no getting away from it. This is the ending and we have a beginning and the beginning is different than what we've lived. And you have to be able to transform, transition, to become a higher, a higher spirituality, a higher vibrate, a higher state of being. You got to connect to your higher self, you know, in order to get to this other, uh, this other world that we're creating through, you know, all of our different like, like not everybody's like me. There's all different ways of uh, this approach. 
like I'm only one of the one of the ways you know there's I'm sure there's tons of different people explaining things in tons of different ways and it always depends on what you understand and so anyways um, I've got way too many things going, way too many things in my mind right now, so, and I do got to get this going so I can, um, uh, get it downloaded, because it'll fucking jack up, and it takes me hours to go to the grocery store, because it takes so long to get there, and so long to get back, so it's an ordeal to go, and, um, if I, if it's not finished downloading, and I prefer to take my phone with me so I can listen to music, but it won't download while I'm gone, and so I've got to get it on the Wi-Fi as fast as possible. So anyways, um, you know, just keep, you know, keep doing whatever feels right to you. Don't listen to what other people think. Get into what you think, how you feel, what are, what are you guided to do? How are you guided to interact and react and stuff? And just remember, you know, it's, you're witnessing yourself. There's, there's, uh, there's, a, there's another side. So whatever you're putting out, you're gonna, you know, the other side will come back. So you will become clear if you're putting out a bunch of negative, bullshit, toxic, hatefulness, then it's going to come back on you. So anyways, we'll, we'll see how it all plays out. Like I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure it's going to be dramatic. And I feel like it's really coming. But that, 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 the crashing in this light coming on of like the control that's been here when the light comes on and people are like, oh my God. And then it starts like because it's already seeping out there's so many lawsuits and shit going and all these government medical like it's all and it's building and building and building to the collapse and then the you know the lights come on like what is this world what have we been living what is going on how do we survive this and that's what starts all of this anger and stuff that we got to go through that part because there's a lot to go through the healing of these people and you know that's what it's all about it's about this healing this transformation becoming this other side of yourself so anyways we still got all that to go through but that is what's going to keep the earth churning and the sun and flaring and everything but then once we get there that's when it's all going to just poof and you know we're going to have the solar flare and then i don't know people some people will leave and some people will stay and the people who stay that that's when we're going to start this new this new world and then that's where we're going to pick up the pieces and I don't know I don't know I think that we're going to be building towards that like I think once the government cry like there's going to be a step down on the government thing like you know uh Trump is going to step back in and I think he's going to you know start fucking taking some control of the situation start getting people to move there's already things coming out where scientists are saying they're they're lying to us they're not telling us what's really going on this is uh, you know this is the end this is the end of this the way things were is ending and the way things were on this planet the landscape the energy it's all changing and but once he comes back in then I think, you know, it's going to be like, let's get these freedom cities going. Let's start getting these communities. Let's start getting these safe places. And I think it is going to be, you know, uh, there will be places, I guess, around because the mountains are going to become like our border, like the ice wall is right now. The ice wall will go away and then there'll be mountains. So there, I think there'll be land inside where the water can't get past the mountains. So there'll still be valleys and stuff. But I don't know, because there's a lot of water, the Mississippi is gonna become way bigger. The water's coming in on us on all directions. Like the United States is completely changing its landscape. Well, it's many other places. Like all of Europe is gonna almost be gone. There's gonna be, you know, some islands around in some places, but so many places are gonna be gone. And but there's gonna be way more islands way more water worlds, <laughs> way more places where we can live out on islands and stuff. So anyways, I, I just all of a sudden, uh, Kevin Spacey, or not Kevin Spacey, uh, Costner movie, Water World. I, I haven't seen that in a long time, but I think they did have that in the future. They were living on the water. There's gonna be a lot of water. There's gonna be a lot of water. But we're also, you gotta remember, we're gonna be opened up to other lands beyond these lands. We're gonna, the whole world's gonna open up. And, and just think about it, like, most everybody wants to live on an island. And so it's going to become that kind of world. 
we're, we're all living on islands and tropical paradises and shit. It's gonna be fun, cool. Right? But you know, it's hard to imagine when we're going through this. You know, you really have to get your focus on this beautiful new world that's ahead of us. You know, and it sounds crazy to so many people, but I can see it. I can see it. So, and I think if you, you know, you think it seems crazy, I'm telling you, Allison Co. Her QHHT ones from a few years back when she was doing so many, there was so much talk of the new world after the solar flash. That's what got all caught up on the solar flash shit. But this new world that's coming, it is, um, it's very interactive with nature. We're all at our best. You know, it's going to be cool. It's going to be cool. So, but man, sometimes when the shit's going down, it's like, fuck, I don't really want to do this. Like, but we're locked in. You're locked in to whatever role you're playing. You're locked in. So <laughs> you just got to come into terms and be, go with the flow, you know, and see what happens. And, you know, just keep confirming. It's like giving yourself affirmations all the time. It's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. Everything's going to be okay. Just remind yourself it's going to be okay. And I'll talk to you. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye.